वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई एम प्रोफेसर त्यागराजन द हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सांस्कृत फ्रॉम प्रेसिडेंसी कॉलेज चेन्नई आई एम गोइंग टू डील विद द पेपर इंडियन एस्थेटिक्स एंड फाइन आर्ट्स इन विच the module i am going to present before you is history and development of poetics this we are going to have different segments because there are lot of authors on poetics prior to learning of poetics we must know in what way it is connected with aesthetics for which we should have a small understanding about aesthetics aesthetics means the beautiful things whether it is arts or fine arts or literature or anything wherever you see the beauty then it becomes aesthetic whenever you have an appreciation for that then it becomes the aesthetic appreciation so aesthetic means something which is catching your heart that means the music or the rhythm or anything even when you are uttering a shloka if it appeals to your mind and heart then it is aesthetics when it is directly connected to poetry it becomes poetics For example, Vaniim, Jeta Shuka Vaniim, Ali Kula Beniim, Babam Budi Droniim, Bina Shuka Shuka Vaniim, Nata Gir Vaniim, Nama Ami Sarvaniim. It's a beautiful verse from Kalidasa. Whenever the, you have some sort of rhythm, automatically it captures your heart. So such writings, whenever it is appreciated, then it becomes the aesthetic appreciation. so in poetry there were lot of poetics and people have been attempting to explain the nature of aesthetics in poetics today we are going to know what is meant by poetics as far as sanskrit is concerned poetics means alankara shastra अलंकारा इज डेकोरेशन एम्बलिशमेंट अलंक्रियते इति अलंकारा सो दैट विच एम्बलिशेस इज कॉल्ड अलंकारा और पोएटिक्स इन इंग्लिश वी आर गोइंग टू ट्रेस द ऑरिजिन ऑफ पोएटिक्स इन दिस मॉड्यूल एंड देन वी आर गोइंग टू फाइंड आउट द डिवाइन ऑरिजिन ऑफ पोएटिक्स एज स्टेटेड बाय राजशेखर ए पोएट देन टू ऑब्जर्व डिफरेंट ऑथर्स एंड द ग्रेजुअल डेवलपमेंट ऑफ पोएटिक्स आल्सो now we will have a small introduction about alankara shastra alankara shastra is as i told you poetics in english in its wider sense alankara means an ornament embellishment that which beautifies poetry in its sense ordinary sense it means the figures of speech called alankara shabda alankaras artha alankaras that means alankara means it is embellishing through sounds and scents when you are embellishing through sound it is called shabda alankara embellished through scents it is called artha alankara so shabda alankaras whenever you are talking about shabda alankaras anuprasa yamaka these are all slesha they are all shabda alankaras when you are talking about artha alankaras upama rupaka वक्रोक्ति आल्सो इज एन अलंकारा अतिशयोक्ति दीपक काव्यलिंग लाइक दट देर आर सो मेनी अलंकारा दट मीन डिफरेंट वे ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन टू कैप्चर दि हार्ट ऑफ दि रीडर्स सो अलंकारा आर दि मेन इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर एज फार एज दि पोएट्री इज कंसर्न the ordinary expression when it is embellished it becomes 
alankara which is in english called figures of speech next we will try to find out the traces of poetics when it was started whether there is a record in the ancient days or when actually it was recognized as the shastra of course you have got words like upama in the rigveda because for all that is indian we trace the origin only from the vedas because that happened to be the ancient text for, available for us so in the rigveda we got the words upama anuprasa yamaka anuprasa means padavritti ki aksharavritti hi anuprasa ityuchite whenever a letter is repeated to embellish then it is called anuprasa for example it is a popular verse everybody knows shri rama rama rameti rame rame manorame sahasra nama tatulyam rama nama varanane shri rama rama ra 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 is repeated the akshara avrti that is called shabdalankara so it is a common example which i have given and the rhetoricians will give so many examples in their alankara shastra and then yamaka the same word word is repeated pada avrti hi yamaka mityuchite but there is a significance the same meaning should not be repeated though the word two words are repeated the first one should have a different meaning the second one should have a different meaning uma davaha ma davaha so there may be a sentence uma davo ma davo there you find ma dava ma dava two words similar but the first one the second one happen to be having different meanings when you say uma dava it refers to the husband of uma parmeshwara lord parmeshwara ma dava refers to that is vishnu the husband of lakshmi so you have different meaning there so such words when used we call that to be yamaka or chimes in english certain references are found in the ancient texts for example satapata brahmana it is an expanding text of the vedas which explains about the rituals of ajurveda where you find certain figures of speech used so also in the kathopanishad you have got instances of rupaka and panini also who belong to 4th century bc has used the words upamana and upamita etc there are instances galore of the use of several figures of speech in ramayana and the mahabharata we shall see alankara as a shastra not traceable in any text why you know though we have been talking about the vedic references with regard to certain words it is not recognized as a shastra in the sense there is no separate treatise exactly for it so it was not mentioned why we are telling like that because there was no reference to it in the declaration of shastras in the ancient texts for example in chandogya upanishad you have got list of subjects to be learned wherein you don't find the reference of alankara shastra so also in apastamba dharma sutra you have got a lot of uh, vidyas to be learned wherein also you don't find a separate nomenclature as alankara shastra yagyavalkya the sage who wrote yagyavalkya smriti he is giving a list of 14 shastras where you don't find alankara shastra as one so also in vishnu purana also which belong to 6th century ad where lot of vidyas are discussed there is no mention of alankara shastra rajashekara was a great poet of course he is not a, a full 
rhetorician. He has collected so many materials from various sources and has presented the Kabya, Kabya Mimamsa, which is uh, partly dealing with poetics also, wherein he is giving the reference to the ancient texts wherein Alankar Sastra is dealt with. Of course, in no other texts except Kavya Mimamsa of Rajasekra, you find references to the ancient origin of Alankara Shastra. He belonged to 10th century AD, wherein he mentions the divine origin. It is said that the spirit of poetry, Kavya Purusha, he calls it, born of the goddess of learning, Saraswati, being induced by Brahma to spread the study of poetics in three worlds. So he related poetics in 18 topics to his 17 will-born pupils, Mansaputras. These divine sages, in their turn, are said to have composed separate treatises on the portions respectively learnt by them. Next, we will find out who are all the persons who have learnt the Shastras, or rather from the will-born uh, uh, Brahma. Thus, according to Raja Sekara, Sahasraksha wrote on Kavira Kasya, that is the secret of poets, how to write poetry, now what is the technique involved in it. Actually, poetics means the technique of writing poetry. Another person by name Ukti Garba wrote on Auktika, that is the poetic expression. Ukti, Ukti means expression. Auktika corresponds to the expression. Then Swarnanaba on Riti. Riti means style. Prachetayana on Anuprasa, which we have already discussed about. Then Chitrangada on Yamaka. And Chitra on verbal jugglery in the sense, using some slesha making the hair splitting puns which will be under, understood only with, with a tight effort. Then Aupakayana on Upama and Parashara on Atishaya, that is Atishayokti, hyperbole, and Utatya on Arthaslesha, that is pun with meanings, Kubera on Ubaya Alankara, both types of uh, Alankaras, Kamadeva on Vainodika, art of enjoyment, Bharata on Rupaka, that is uh, dramaturgy. Here, the students may have some confusion. Rupaka generally means an Alankara also. So, Rupaka refers to dramaturgy also, dramas. So, this distinction, you will have to make it based on the situation in the text. Then Nandikesura wrote on Raza, that is aesthetic expression, and Dishana on Dosha, the defects of the poetry, and then Upamanyu on Guna, that is the poetic excellence, the merits of the poetry, and Kuchamara on Aupanishdika, that is the poetic philosophy. Now we shall see the reliability of the existence of poetics, because Ajay Sekhara has said these references, but is there any other reference elsewhere? Of course, it is not available for us. But at the same time, how to rely on this? It is a legendary account, but it is unalterable authority where the actual origin is, is forgotten. Though there is no mention of this account elsewhere in Alankara, they find the expression in Bharata, in Vatsyayana, with regard to the origin of the allied disciplines of dramaturgy and erotic respectively. The historical value of this passage of Rajasekara, of course, is in doubt. But it is possible that this unique account embodies a current tradition implying the actual existence at some remote and forgotten period of early exponents of poetic theory, some of whose names are still familiar but most of whose works have apparently perished. The most early reference to Alankara Shastra is found in the text Lalita Vistara, a fairly early Avadana treatise, that is the Buddhist text. It mentions a Kavya Karanagrantha, which means how to create a poetry. So, he has written a book on that. 
then you find references in the sukraniti which belong to 13th and 14th century ad according to pv kane a great exponent in poetics which appears to be the earliest work to refer to alankara shastra among other shastras 32 utra shastras they mention in that you find the reference to alankara shastra there are reasons to believe that this shastra originated much earlier than the 17th century ad the poeticians bamaha who belong to 7th and 8th century and dandin 8th century refer to earlier writers or their views both bamaha and dandin presuppose a fairly long period of development of this poetics otherwise it would not have been possible to write such systematic and well thought out treatises so it is justifiable to suppose that this poetics as a distinct discipline was considerably developed about the 6th century ad had it been so the poetics must have originated much earlier see let us uh, have only the probable date of poetics because we can't pinpoint which actually the date of poetics see in the 4th and 5th centuries in the gupta regime there was a renaissance of sanskrit literature kalidasa is generally believed to have belonged to the, this period tanmantri chapanaka amarasimha gatakarpara kalidasa like that you have a reference there the navaratnas nine gems of uh, um, nine gems who adorned adorned the court of uh, king vikramaditya may be that the poetics also flourished in this period of cultural resurgence now from this period onwards you find the development of alankara shastra when poems and dramas have been written a need was felt among those who were the composers and the critics of the certain rules both to guide the novices and to check the form and nature of the compositions the rules of dramaturgy took pre- precedence over the poems the figures of speech also were given some importance as they were intended to maintain and keep up the standard of sentiment the branch of study came to acquire the name alankara on account of the importance given to figures of speech it is also called the branch of sahitya sahitasya bhavah sahityam sahita refers to what shabda and artha shabdartho sahito kavyam is the definition so because that says it lays on the inseparable relation between a word and its meaning kalidasa too says vagartha viva sampruktau that you cannot separate the meaning from the word so the following topics are generally dealt with in the branch of study the theory and definition of poetry the notation of words and uh, nature and varieties of characters like hero heroine and others sentiment qualities blemishes and then dramaturgy and figures of speech all these things are coming under the purview of sahitya which is the broad feature of poetics then coming to the first man to just bring out the initiation of alankara shastra is bharata bharata's natya shastra is uh, very popular it appears that the earliest extant work available on poetics is natya shastra bharata muni who belong to 1st century bc natya shastra is an encyclopedic manual on the theater arts almost every aspect of drama and dramatic representation are discussed here in composition and the enactment of a play as well as dramatic appreciation are dealt with in great detail and as ancillary to drama such subjects as music dance etc are fully discussed in the same manner natya shastra deals with the poetry and poetics theory also poetry comes within the scope of vachika abhinaya the drama in bharata streetis these apart early traces of poetry theory also are found in this work so only we i said that he happens to be the pioneer in the field of poetics his treatise deals with the concept of rasa rasa is the aesthetic pleasure or the aesthetic experience he deals with that rasa to explain the aesthetic objective of dramatic representation and even though there is evidence to believe that the concept originated even earlier oldest extant theoretical writings on this important subject are those found in natya shastra the period of about 7 centuries succeeding bharata appear to be blank in the history 
of Sanskrit poetics. See, Bharata's Nati Shastra, whenever we are talking about Bharata's Nati Shastra, we find a lot of information available for aesthetics. Primarily, Bharata's Nati Shastra is intended only for the dramatic composition. But he has also dealt with the figures of speech, how to present the script for it. So he is talking about bhavas and only the maturity of the bhava becomes raza, he says. So he is giving lot of classification of bhavas and then he is numbering the razas, how many razas are there, how to classify those razas, how to present the emotions. And then the peculiar thing is that he has got uh, the beautiful list of emotions. The, the first and the foremost work which deals with the emotions, mind. And not only that, how to present those emotions before the audience. That uh, is the speciality of Bharata. So, in this module, what you ha we have learned is that whenever you are talking about aesthetics, it covers poetics. Aesthetics is in broader sense. Poetics concerns directly to poetry. So the composers of poems are to necessarily be brought under certain rules and regulations. Therefore, though the poetry has been written, the norms for writing the poetry were not known to them. Of course, it was not made as a treatise. Otherwise, for the poetry, only the Pritiba, as other Alankarikas, especially Anandavardhana, whom we are going to see later, who says one should have Pratibha to compose a poem. He explains Pratibha as Nava Nava Unmesha Salini Pratibha. That means at every minute, every moment, something new is springing out from the mind of a poet. So, such things that Pratibha is always there with the poet, and poet themselves may not be aware of poetics. Because the, the poetics and the other treatises which uh, regulate the presentation of poetry, poetry came later. But for a poet, there is no stringent rule how to write it because nirankushaha kaveha, there is a statement. There is no anchor for kavis. Kavihi krantadarshi. He is the foreseer of things. He describes so many things. So, when he is describing, you cannot control him. You will have to write only like this. Because it is the spontaneous flow that is coming out from his heart, from his own observation. So, the descriptions and other things are just running like river from his mind. So, you can't make a block of it. So it should be allowed to roll on and in that you can find out whether there is a system behind it. So that system or the technique alone has been dealt with in the Sanskrit poetics. And there are a lot of uh, rhetoricians or the people who have uh, given definitions to the poetry and uh, critics who have criticized that it should not be there, that it is defective, this is meritorious. So such analysis are also done by so many writers. So many writers have given new definitions also. And uh, some people were advocating the raza, the aesthetic uh, experience. Some people were very much interested in the structure of the poem. Some, that is a reeti. Some people were very much interested in the, uh, what you call, 
uh, Vakrokti, which is uh, a different style, different way of composing, and Dhuni, suggestive element. Like that, they have been analyzing things, and they say only when such component is available in the poetry, then only it is a relatable poetry. That's what they say, it is the soul of poetry. So, each one is claiming, and with regard to Raza, though Parada talks about Raza, which the classification of Raza which we are going to see in the next module, where everyone is advocating the Raza, and simultaneously the prominence is given to one or two Rasas by the poet, poets, and one says Shringari Eva Maduraha, only the erotic or the romantic alone is so much interesting and the other rasas are only subordinates which may not be that much interesting and according to Bhavabhuti who says Eko rasa karuna, karuna eva see there is only one rasa why do you talk about so many rasas there is only one rasa which is karuna that is pathetic, pathos perhaps for him it is the more touching emotion so everyone is melting when they are coming across a scene of pathos or the description of pathos. So everyone has got the opinion and each one happens to be right and correct when they discuss about it in their own way with regard to the poetry. So, poetics is a very broad field. So many persons have been attempting to describe, regulate, regulate systematize the poetic features and the later writers or the critics, they have made use of these poetic theories for the appreciation of beauty. As far as literature and the vidyas are concerned, vidyas means learning, the topics of learning. See, the vidyas are concerned. The conventional idea is to attach the origin to the divinities. Because we cannot know who is actually the first one to bring out such a concept. That's why we say even to Vedas that Vedas are not written by men. It is the breath of the great Brahman, we say. It may be probably due to the reason that who actually brought it to the world. So in the absence of concrete evidence to the origin of anything, we always trace it to the divine origin. There may be references, but most of them are lost to us. That is the thing. The references are maybe got from the mouth of the teacher, that is oral teaching, or already documented places, or written in the form of scriptures, or sculptures. So we can gather information from those things, but when all those things are not got, in the absence of those uh, evidences, we are necessarily resorted to gods. And especially these poetics, the Salankara Shastra is traced to the origin uh, or divine, divine origin and the first and the foremost author who taught to the Sishyas are the disciples 
happened to be Brahma. Perhaps the reason for choosing Brahma as the divinity for developing this Shastra is due to the fact that he is the creator. So, any creation is always attached to aesthetics and poetics. So, further and further, new, new creations are being created. So, it is a development. So, such a development aspect is always attached to Brahma. And the learning part of it, anything, any knowledge, Vidya, is always attached to the feminine entity, God Saraswati. Therefore, God Saraswati was initiated by Brahma and the poetics came into vogue. So, such is the expression given by Rajasekara in his Kavya Mimamsa, where he is mentioning about the authors of the original exponents of the discipline being taught by Brahma. Thus, in this module, we have learnt the beginnings of Sanskrit poetry and the idea of what is Alankara and different kinds of uh, Alankara, some samples we have seen, not with the illustrations, but with the idea that of nomenclatures like Upma, Rupaka and all, and then classification as Sabdalankara and Arthalankara, and then further development like uh, the Raza, Vakrokti, and other things which we are going to see in the next module, in the next class. Thank you.